All right, guys, um, I should pop this out of the way. We were eating popcorn. I was actually trying the new, um, I know it's really bad, and we had kind of a junk food weekend kind of thing. So I was trying the Cheetos popcorn. We normally have that for snacks sometimes, like just like the white cheddar popcorn sometimes. I know it's not the greatest snack for people, but um, it is what it is. Anyways, we are going to see how this goes. Hey, Nana. Um, so we're working on to look, um, Anna loves birds, she loves sheep, and she likes turtles, right? Do you like dogs and cats? Yeah, you like dogs and cats and horses. But your big ones that you get a kick out of are, like, sheep shearing, you like to watch a lot of sheep shearing. She loves horses, she likes to go visit the horses. Um, what else? You like your dogs? Alpha is, like, her big thing. She's never been really big about the dogs, and all of a sudden, Alpha came along, and it was like, boom, this connection between Alpha and Anna, and it was incredible. So, anyways, hope you still, um, we're working on that cough. I might try to take her out and get some cool air. It's like, I don't know, I can't show you guys, I don't know, the wind, it's so sunny out. Anyway, it's sunny, it's nice, the snow is like awesome, perfect day for skating, outdoor activities. Um, you know, if I could try to figure it all out. And had the energy. One day, I plan to put Anna in a sled and just be like, okay, guys, let's go and give her, let's go out in the sled and have some fun and stuff like that. But um, working on rebuilding ourselves again and our confidence and things like that. So, and I wants to work on a phoenix, guys. Um, I don't know. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've done a lot of drawings and things like that. Um, painting has never been my forte of life, but... Um, as art therapy goes around, and it loves to paint. So I had to learn how to combine <laughs> sketching skills with painting skills and oil pastel and all that stuff because the girls want to do this and do that. And so we are working on that, and we will see. I want to try to do like a thick texture, and of course it will be glow in the dark, but I think I want to do it more wild glow in the dark. I picked up a couple different colors, um, purple, orange, um, it's some black light colors, so blue, pink, green, and it loves the colors blue and, um, around in the blue area, so anything blue, green, and yellows she likes, um, is that what, any purples? Just blue, green, and yellow? Okay, yeah, so just blue, green, and yellow, um, are her favorite colors, and then, of course, I'm wearing the purple and blues, um, anything around purple colors, I love teals, <laughs> things like that, and then Hope is kind of so versatile, she loves reds and blacks and purple, because we love purple, and <laughs> she loves purple too, it's, it's just a color that becomes that positive color, and, it, and um, purple is known as the positive color of all the colors, so if you look at, like, um, in a spiritual realm of things, like if you're looking in, and I'm looking, I'm not talking like go into like total witchcraft and do this and that. I'm talking like, um, when you can relate things to life and for myself, the color of purple is my favorite color, which actually turned out to be the color of positivity. So it's one of my favorite colors that you'll most commonly see us work with is blues, <laughs> greens, and you know, our favorite colors. So here we go. We're going to start, um, grabbing the pencil I'm going to start looking up some designs and I'm going to see what we make out of here and if it doesn't turn out to be a phoenix then we're just going to pretend completely um it's something else and that this video didn't even happen so we'll just pretend that it was like you know whatever it turns out to be we'll just pretend that's what it's going to be guys so we'll see how it goes and um and then I have a busy creative day um I'm starting to feel better. Hope is still barky. Yeah, she's been lethargic and barky and just huddles in her corner away from us and um, resting, fluids, all that kind of stuff. And Belly is like, where did my dad go? This is how she gets when Hugo goes somewhere. She Or she'll sit at the window and she'll literally... Her and Quartz will go and jump on my yoga ball and literally sit on the yoga ball, staring out the window, watching where did Hugo or Hope go or, you know what I mean? Or if Quartz is all of a sudden, like, you know, like yesterday, decided that she's going to bark at my neighbors, so she decided to jump on the ball and there she goes. That's what it is. But Belly's like, he didn't take me for the car run today. So she gets a little bit, 
Yeah, she's very moody, this one. This one here is a big, moody personality. And I, honest to God, have had my neighbor ask me if we torture our dog or something and what's wrong with her. Because as you can see, her little wine, and sorry, I was doing a trait care today and I guess I had a trait care swab on the ground. So we have to do her meds, brush her teeth, all that stuff, which we're still going to brush your teeth yet. That's what I forgot to do. Um, but yeah, they all have like, he thought like, He's like, are you guys, like, torturing your dog? And, like, what's going on with her and stuff? And we're like, no, when she wants in, she cries. When she wants to be with Hugo, she cries. Like, that's it. Now she's pouting. Like, she's seriously, like, that's her sulking pouting. Like, fine. She looks like she's about to cry. Yeah. And um, what she likes to do for Belle, she's really unique with Hugo. Uh, she'll jump on him, push and press her front body onto his body when he's having anxieties. She'll she'll hug, almost hug him, wrap her, his, her arms around him, and when he's, like, increasing in temperament or um, really cannot control his, like, he's just, and she, you know, you, it's a room that you can feel it really out of. She'll come up and she'll start compressing on him, or if you're going through serious depression or anything like that, she likes to come up and she'll come and compress against your body. Uh, by hugging you and whatnot. And other than that, Belle is just kind of a loner go. She's kind of um, snotty. She's You really never see her, actually. And um, the only time she really loves to be with Hugo and follow him everywhere. She goes off leash. She will bark at other dogs, so we do have to watch that. And um, she's amazing with him. So that is, like, you know, his thing. And then there's Quartz under Hope's feet. And Quartz is quite the goofy, serious ham. So she is the transition for Chelsea, who is somewhere. I think she went outside. So Quartz will be. <clears throat> oh, and I've got everything charging. So, anyways, Quartz was. Um, she'll be. She's transitioning for Chelsea, as um, you can. As Chelsea's getting older, um, starting to show signs that she's deteriorating. So we've um, have that transition. Um, just because Chelsea's always been with our family and has been with Hope since she was a baby, like literally mother hand her. I will eventually put together something really cool or nice, maybe. I don't know if it'll be cool on some updates of things. Hey, your video. Yeah, your birthday's coming up and stuff, right? Yeah. So we've got to do some videos and, um, we'll catch up on some you know, stuff that was, I guess, we're delayed on, um, on, a, on our story and stuff like that. So we'll start showing more of it. And, um, yeah, and so far, looking good, hey? I'm productive. Anyways, this will be our moment or our day project. And um, I don't know, when I feel within today or tomorrow, maybe we'll show some progress tonight. Depending on what it looks like, it could come out like, you know, where we might be like, we're going to paint a board today, guys, and it's going to come out as some, I don't know, jackrabbit, for all I know. I don't know. So we're going to see how this turns out. Anyways, and um, this one's an 18 by something canvas, and so, again, Michaels, I love going to Michaels to get canvases or things. Um, you know, they'll have their 30% off, and, you know, their 20, oh, we've got five pieces for this price and you know and I mean seriously like it's everything goes up so much everywhere but when you start looking at coupons and prices and I mean it sucks sometimes but it's cool like I, I really like going to Michael's because um or Dollarama Dollarama seems to have a lot of really cool stuff so Dollarama is my other go-to um I know ironic but like I said, you know, you can do crafts out of anything, arts out of anything, um, re resourceful out of anything. So I'm going to work on trying to find my PVC pipings again. Mm-hmm. And I have these PVC pipings. Um, as you can see, me and Anna love plants. We had a couple of years ago our goal to start utilizing them and start planting some plants and making gardens and start gardening and um, help people start them up and, you know, that kind of stuff and be more resourceful through our resources and um, kind of bring ourselves back more to the ground of earth of things, I guess, and just um, rehabilitate ourselves and stuff. But it was just 
a lot of different things happening. My son moving out, my mom moving out, my mom moving in, my mom moving out. And it's just, you know, somebody moving in or out or it was just a lot of things being tossed, things being moved, things, you know, and then in between we are dealing with a lot on our own plate, but we just make do with how things are going. So, um, any ideas or tips or things like that? I'm me and Anna. We love to learn new techniques. We love to learn um, new ideas. We've tried. We're gonna try again the balloon technique. Didn't really turn out like it shows on the videos, and sometimes that really happens. So we did this like pour paint thing, and then. I don't know, it just didn't turn out, so we just didn't show that one. But that's going to be our family background canvas um, thing, and I will show that one later on. It's in progress, and I'm going to have to tape um, two canvases together because the canvas isn't big enough. And Anyway, it will be what it is, and this one will be the phoenix. And then we have Enna's up in the corner there of a Van Gogh count by number set thing that she did, and I think we're going to try to do something with that eventually. What do you think, Anna? Do you want to do something with that one, or yeah, like code it or something? Yeah. <coughs> and then, anyway, so that's one of her, one of my favorites, the Starry Night. I even the Starry Nights and got an awesome song too, with it. Um, the little facts that things that people don't realize about Van Gogh. Yes, he cut his ear off. Yes, he, all this stuff, and people are like, oh, he's crazy. He sent it off to his ex and blah blah blah. True story about Van Gogh, though. Um, when Van Gogh cut off his ear, the fact was he was actually apparently really sick with something. And, um, I don't know. I can't remember the whole story. I mean, I know the logistics and I wanted to mention that yesterday when I mentioned the double canvases and, um, he was apparently really sick with something and became delusional and which is what led him to cut his own ear off is from the sickness that he was actually suffering from. So really realistically the world will know oh and Van Gogh cut off his ear and sent it but no in real reality he was seriously sick and delusional from a virus or something I believe it was anyways I have to research that um, I'm gonna double check it out because I remember it was a something like that and I was like yeah it had to do with his illness and all that stuff and um, you know the little in depths of things people don't go into and and describe and say look this is what happened to him, but they will say oh he cut his ear off and sent it to his yeah loved one. <laughs> but crazy hey see it's it's just crazy how things get picked up so rapidly and we tend to forget the logistics under what was going on. So here we go. Um, we maybe try some scrape techniques today. I don't know. But anyways, guys, enjoy your day. Um, we're going to enjoy ours. It's starting to warm up out there. And I don't know. It's it's really starting to look beautiful. Like This is like my favorite type of winter. I, I used to love to go skiing in this kind of winter or skating. Oh, my gosh. And I know sometimes tobogganing. And, but I think skiing at this time of the of the year was like my ultimate favorite thing to do and now I'm like oh do I put skis on and if I fall because I've got osteoporosis now and I can do this and you know every fall I seem to take now I just seem to get a fracture somewhere so it's like okay I haven't been on skis for a long time they're gonna have to do my weight they're oh my gosh us women hey <laughs> the lovers of life so um we plan to kind of do that and then um I don't know. We're going to see how our day goes. And we've got lots of things to do. Stretches and... Well, I don't know. We just go by the flow with our day. We just do what we have to do. The right meds. Getting a medication currently right now. Which I need to push um, and pay attention to. Because that's also in his fluids. So we got to make sure she gets a lot of those throughout the day. Monitor everything. She's 96 on... Why are you 96 on 87? But she's 96 on 87... So the top um, number on the monitor is her oxygen, hang on, sorry guys, her oxygen saturations. So if you look, the 96, that's your oxygen levels. You can see she's got, you know, a fairly good wavelength going on, 77 and 79, that's the heart rate. Um, color looks great. Okay, so she was like 86 and she was pink like this. Well, yeah, it would be like, okay, check the show probe, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. 
all those kinds of things. We like to keep them in the higher numbers of oxygen levels for SMA children, um, give them that advantage. They drop very quickly. Low reservation for an SMA type one for like someone like Anna and Hugo is back home. So that was quick and, um, but a little bits and facts we'll start, you know, sharing about spinal muscular atrophy type one. I don't know a whole lot about Williams syndrome. We didn't get a whole lot of time with Caleb about three months with Caleb and um, we did not get to be able to cram in the research um, like we were able to with spinal muscular atrophy due to the fact that I don't know I tried googling it everything and there just was not enough resources or education for me to understand what Williams syndrome truly was so um, with SME I found resources I was lucky enough to connect with the mom right away and really be able to be the highball on that one and say look look there's mom doing this and there is the you know um what was dr bach protocols and all these things and you know what i mean there is this there is that and it was crazy so i was able to really quickly get the research in be able to you go quickly learned english and quickly took in ink the research <laughs> very quickly because when we met he only spoke french so that is another. <laughs> so that is another fact. Uh, when we met him and I, never he didn't even speak any English, and it was like um, our communicate. We just communicated very well with each other. Like we were able to really know what we were saying or understanding, and and sometimes we really had to figure it out, but we did. We made do, and <coughs> he learned to research. Um, SMA very quickly and learned how to talk in front of lots of doctors very quickly and he learned how to say a sheet of paper correctly in front of a bunch of professionals in a big conference meeting um, at the Stollery, all the big professionals and yes we learned very quickly how to say sheet of paper when you have a big serious meeting going on. Anyways guys ending it here um, I've got my coffee now and we're ready to work on the Phoenix. I don't know, we might not make a phoenix, but we'll try. Thank you for all your subscriptions, for subscribing, and we want to do a shout out to Tristan from Canada, and say how hello. <clears throat> yes, hey, and there are others and stuff like that, but, you know, we thought he's saying, you know, hello from Canada, and we'll say hello from Canada as well, Alberta, and, um, you know, Keep your comments going, and again, once we reach 500 subscribers, the Labyrinth will start, you know, doing a giveaway for the Labyrinth. So, glow on through. And it's Anna's birthday coming up around um, February 7th. Her, um, we're hitting a decade and a half, guys, so 15 years. I was told she wouldn't make it past seven months old. So, um, you know, they looked at me, hold her in your arms, let her go. We're making 15 years now, guys. We've had some incredible journeys, and I'm going to try to put, make a nice video and post um, some of our nice journeys up there. So it's one step at a time. Enjoy this beautiful day. Embrace what, you know, most people would take for granted. Just take a moment of one thing out of your life today that you want to embrace and that you've never really took time to embrace because you just haven't done that. Like, just stop and pause for a minute. What is something you have taken for granted in your life? And really embrace that and think about it and try to re-reflect it, redirect it. And that's kind of what I do every day. Um, and then I cry. <laughs> I cry lots because of my depression. So anyways, guys, today I'm not crying. It's a better day for me psychologically, I guess, on my PTSD day. And this is why we love art. And we have no staff today, so we just kind of do all of Anna's care slowly, just wash her up or brush her teeth, do a little bit of this, change her, then do a little bit of that, take the dogs out, and then Hope might want to go to the barn or she might want to go, you know, tobogganing or to a movie or whatever. So, yeah. So then we kind of split up and one will do something with Hope and one will do something with Anna. And um, that's kind of how we do it, guys, right? And in the summertime... We are crossing fingers that we can start having more productivity out of adventures, like go to the zoo and find a fit walk through the rest of the zoo because we walk through the new part of it. And I know, I mean, everybody has their opinions about zoos, um, but you know, Anna loves to go see the turtles and stuff. So, uh huh, <laughs> that was a big guess. Yeah, she likes the big tur tortoises they let loose. So. She just gets a kick out of them and the goats that she gets to go see and pet. And 
<clears throat> all that stuff. So, all right, one step at a time. <laughs>